Look at that. Number one, number two, number one, number one, number one. All the way through 2018. And then, you know, yeah, it's a big dip. Number two, number three, back to number two. They should be, Lugs, the number one destination in the Pac-12. Does Lincoln Riley change that? Well, it's what he's tasked with doing. And listen, you could go back all the way to the Pac-8, to the Pac-10, to the Pac-12. Every coach that's ever coached in that conference will tell you that if there was a great player on the West Coast and USC wanted him, he was going to SC. And it was everybody else's problem to have to come up with a solution to that. That hasn't been the case the last three to five years. And so Lincoln Riley and his staff were tasked with doing one thing, putting a fence around the state of California and not allowing the state's best players and the West Coast's best players to go to the SEC, go to the Big 12, and leave the footprint. A Bryce Young from California can't go to Alabama. A C.J. Stride, Stroud from California can't go to Ohio State. Lincoln Riley knows that. You stop that and you begin to bring these guys home, now the entire landscape changes for the Pac-12. Two, two Heisman Trophy finalists you just mentioned, and one I got one of the guys yeah. that's going to compete for the number one overall pick in the draft coming Correct. up, Kayvon Thibodeau, yep. also getting out of California. You're exactly right. He's got to be able to keep those guys, at least his selection of those guys home. Yeah, Matt Corral goes out west. DJ Uwe Ungalale. Tua yeah. was from Hawaii. Tua. Xavier Worthy. <laughs> yeah, <and you laughs> this goes at, on and on, man. Yeah, to Texas, yeah. Look at the high school players uh, committed here. They flip Relic Brown from Oklahoma. You see Branch, Devon Tompkins as well. Can You mentioned recruiting California. Can you win by just getting the guys in California? Can you win national championships by doing that? I would say yes 10 years ago. Maybe not now because there's no linemen. That's the problem. Quarterbacks, yes. Skill guys, yes. But you mentioned Kayvon Thibodeau. That's one guy. Yeah. That's one guy. You go down in the southeast footprint, all right, and you're looking at four or five Kayvon Thibodeaux in a given year, mm -hmm. all right, all within four or five states that border on each other. That's not a luxury right now that the West Coast has. That's the challenge is how do you, how do you build a championship-level, trench-performing team, offensive line and defensive front, not only with elite-level players, but depth at all of those players, to compete if you got into a college football playoff scenario with a Georgia, with an Alabama, with a Clemson. Let's bring in uh, Tom Van Heer with more on Lincoln Riley and the move to SC and the impact it could have. Tom? Well, one thing I want to point out, too, before Lincoln Riley, a, an important get, Zion Branch, for all the reasons you guys listed, but also he has a younger brother, Zachariah, who's ranked number 16 overall in the 2023 class. So he might have gotten mm -hmm. two branches in one. But you look at this class, now with Zion in it, they only have seven total commitments, commitments, which is incredible to think that USC would be sitting here on signing day with seven commitments. But I don't think Trojan fans should panic because a lot of times what we see is an impact in the next recruiting class. And from the people that I've spoken to, especially in Southern California, there is a level of excitement around what Lincoln Riley is bringing to USC that I haven't seen before, that I didn't see with Clay Helton there. And, and one person that I spoke to in particular said, you have to recruit the backyard. This is, this is a nice backyard here in California. You've got to recruit the backyard. You've got to, you've got to keep the in-state prospects home. And the person I spoke with said, I think Lincoln Riley in the next class Probably going to keep a lot of those top kids home. Yeah, Malachi Nelson again, quarterback yep. for 2023. They've let's go back to Luganville here again for next year. It's sure. it's hard to hit the ground running and get guys in 2022. You yeah. can flip a guy or two, but he's already making big headway next year. Make some waves. Show that it's a different approach. Prove it by your conduct, how you go about doing business. It's very obvious that they're not screwing around right now at USC. They are investing. They're, ups, they're, they're, they're updating their manpower, their administrative power, their, their recruiting workforce, and now you're going to have name, image, and likeness. You are in Los Angeles. <laughs> you are going to have opportunities at your disposal that most, even top-tier programs, will not have. Lincoln Riley and that staff will take advantage of all of it. And if you look at, at the transfer portal right now, I would imagine a lot of those holes will be filled quickly by that. Mm -hmm. And if that can translate to wins, proof of concept, early on saying, hey, what I took from Oklahoma, me and Alex Grinch can recreate here. Sure. That'll only help him even more. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.